Now, a spreadsheet doesn't have much value without data, so in this lesson, we'll explore the basics of data entry. So let's start things out with the spreadsheet that we're using for this course, which is attached to this lesson. So if you need to pause and go ahead and grab that spreadsheet, do that now. Once you're done, go ahead and open up that Excel for Busy People sandbox. And on this first sheet in the workbook, we're going to enter some data into this cell right here. So it's cell D18. So if we want to replicate what's along this top row of headings, all I have to do is start typing. So MP is going to go in this first cell. And then to commit the data into the cell, I can hit return. I can use the arrow keys. I can hit the tab key. So if I hit return, it takes me down a cell. If I hit tab, it takes me to the right. If I hit the arrow keys, it'll move me up, down, or left and right, depending on which arrow key that I hit. Pretty straightforward stuff. So if you go to the next column heading here, you can type in a W, hit tab, type in a D, hit tab, and so on. Now another keyboard shortcut that you should commit to memory is shift tab. That'll help you move to the left in your spreadsheet rather than to the right when you hit the tab key. Now, if you want to change a selection, all you have to do is select that cell. So just by using the arrow keys, I've reselected cell D18. And just by typing new data into the cell, I replace what's already there. So again, very straightforward stuff. Now, if I want to edit something that's already in a cell rather than replacing all of the information, because sometimes some of your cells can contain a lot of text and you don't necessarily want to retype all of that text, all you have to do is select the cell and then go up to the formula bar and then set the cursor in the formula bar and then make your edit. So for example, say I've caught a typo in the word Portland here in Portland Timbers, I can change that very easy by backspace or delete key and then just use the formula bar like you would a word processor. So type in Portland and then hit enter when you're done. Another option you have is that you can double click in the cell itself that makes the cursor appear in the cell and then you can use the arrow keys to navigate around the cell hit delete hit backspace and then make your edit and when you're done hit the tab key or the enter key to commit your change now let's go over to cell d20 and let's start to enter in a number here so matches played for sporting kansas city is going to be the same as every other team let's enter 34 hit the enter key, and notice that not only does it drop me down, but in this case, Excel is applying some intelligence and saying you want to go to the start of where you're entering data in this table that you're building here. So it may do that if you just hit enter rather than just going straight down. But what I also want to point out here is that if you enter a number, by default, Excel is going to right align the numeric value. If you're entering in something that Excel interprets as text, then it's going to be left aligned. So this is very easy to see if you look at entries like LAFC or NYC FC, and then all the numeric values up here in the Eastern Conference results show that the numeric values are right aligned. And we'll talk about that more as we continue on. For now, let's look at Excel's most useful feature when it comes to data entry, at least the quickest feature, and that is something called the autofill. So this works on a number of different levels. We'll just introduce the topic right here. So go to an empty spot of your spreadsheet. You can use cell L18 is fine. If you want to use L17, that one's fine too. But make a cell selection here and then start typing in a numeric sequence. So most simple one, one, two. Once I've configured the sequence, once Excel has enough information to interpret the sequence, I can give that sequence a selection. And now let's go to the lower right hand corner of our selection. And that is the autofill handle, that very specific mouse pointer that is a skinny crosshair. So that is the selection crosshair, that is the autofill handle. Once I click and drag that autofill handle, the sequence fills in automatically. And again, this can be used in a number of different ways. So with this still selected, I'm just going to hit the delete key on the keyboard that deletes everything in the selection here. I'll go back and reselect and let's do this again. Let's type in 10 this time. 
Now let's see like, well, will it go to 20? No, if I autofill 10, it'll just repeat the same information because I haven't given Excel enough information to go on. It hasn't established the pattern. So let's recreate this this time. Let's do 10, hit enter 20, and that should be enough to establish the pattern. So I'll select both of those cells, click and drag the autofill handle, and Excel autofills in 30, 40, 50, and 60. Now before we go, I want to point out that this works with other types of patterns as well. In fact, Excel is so good at working with things like times and dates that if you type in January, select January, and then drag the autofill handle either to the right or to the left, Excel will autofill that data as well. It'll autofill the months of the year. And as I mentioned, you can drag this to the right or to the left. So your starting place is January here. You can backfill it with December and November from the previous year. This also even works with things like quarters. So say you're tracking quarterly sales. You can enter in Q1 or QT, QTR1, select it, and then drag, and you've just filled in a year's worth of quarters, quarter one, two, three, and four, all made possible with autofill. So when you think autofill, think sequences in your spreadsheet, think of easy ways to enter data. In fact, Excel is so good at working with dates and times that we'll continue discussing that very topic coming up next.